know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 yo. Uh, yo, what's up, yo? GYB, we get your balls back. WWDD, what with Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, I know I've said that this is a special show. I've said that uh, maybe 500 times before, but this time I really mean it. I mean it this time, not like I didn't mean it the other true, times. True, true. But this time I now mean it. Now you don't it. have to lie. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> We got, uh, what's going on here? Are you ready to rock and roll? You know damn well. I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, I'm shout ready. Out to, shout out to Andre. Andre's out in LA doing his thing. He's uh, make, doing big things. Hopefully he'll uh, actually get me a job in in uh, mainstream um, uh, comedy at some point in time. So me and Harry are ho- hoping for. That's but, what uh, we want. Shout out to Dre. Uh, we got a special guest. And this is a good friend of mine. I mean, I love this dude to death. Uh, we don't see each other nearly as much as we should. Uh, funny, one of the funniest dudes I know. Uh, he's in every commercial, everywhere, constantly. Uh, oh, shit load of them anyway. Uh, give it up for my boy Chris Roach. Yo. Give it up for Chris Roach. What's up, Dante? What's up, Harry? What's hey, man. On? Thank you for doing the show. Thanks for having me, guys. Are, are you setting up a, a studio here back there? Because I see some, I see some uh, egg cartons in the back. Yes. What's going on? So I got boxes of all that uh, sound. Uh, proofing crap and i got a tiny closet over here that i'm gonna try to set up a voiceover booth and you know oh, nice, nice. you know how it is you're just trying to uh diversify trying to okay. get inco- income coming in you know when the stand-up's quiet and the acting's quiet you know trying to diversify now you know um just so i can just to say give me a quick tip since you're talking about this you know they make a small circular booth you can sit on the desk. I got that too. I got right. that too. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna put that in the studio too. I and, might use and, both. Yeah, I might use yeah, both. Yeah, you, you might be good with one. I know somebody that was doing voiceover just with that alone on the on the. Uh, yeah, I think I might you do both because uh, it's a little tight in there. So on the sides, I might go with those uh, those uh, trucking blankets. Yeah, yeah. On, on the side and use these for like the front and top. Yeah, yeah. But. Uh, I've been having a friend of mine that's pretty good with voiceovers help me out. And, yeah, good, good. You know, I just got to see if I can get air in there now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Uh, they do have a little, they have a little uh, portable AC that you could buy a company. I'll send you, I'll send you a link. But anyway, yeah. how you been, bro? Good, I mean, man. Fun and I'm just trying to, you know, Harry, I can't help myself helping people. You know what I mean? That's what that's I do. All, that's what you He's do. That's what you're known for, helping people yeah. and then stabbing people in the feet with ice picks. I have right. been, I have done both. You've I done both. both. I've done both. You know what they say? You want to diversify. I mean, we we're just yeah. talking about that. Right. Diversify. Yeah. Stab you know, people you know. in the feet. And... That's you what gotta... they mean by a renaissance man. Right. What was the no, stabbing cause... in the foot? What was the stabbing in the foot thing? Did I miss uh, this? This was years ago. Uh, some guy was beating up my sister. Oh, I thought it was a movie. <laughs> no, no, no. This is real life. <laughs> I remember you in that movie with Terrence Howard, and that was yeah, a good fight yeah, scene. You had a good yeah, scene. Yeah, the, uh, no, this Dante's was, a method actor. Yeah, so <laughs> he gets, to, he gets real in a character. I mean, he's been working on these parts. Some of them thirty years. He's yeah, been, uh, yeah. I, I was, uh, I was with uh, what's his name on Mohican. Oh, uh, Last of the Mohicans, and I went deep cover with uh, what was uh, 
What's the dude? Daniel Day Lewis. Da- yeah, me and him, we had the same method. Same method actors. You so know? Somebody's messing with your sister. That's like instinct. Yeah, yeah. He dude was beating on my sister. And, uh, not, not cool. And he somehow, somehow he got snatched off the street. How that? Oh, yeah. That's I probably, cool. I, from the story I hear, right. somebody asked him what time it was. And then, oh, I don't know, what happened? The lights was out and he woke up in a van. Yeah. You know, and then the, the tragedy was that it's, you know, because I wouldn't want anything to hurt me. I wouldn't want to see anybody get hurt. But no. uh, they might have wrapped his feet up in 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 towels, right? And I picked his feet and dropped him out on on uh, Hunts Point. Whoa, that might have. That's heard- that's the rumor. I don't know. Ex- I, you know me. I don't. I yeah, don't gossip. No. I heard about that going around. <laughs> it's going around. <laughs> it's going around. Remember when the kids would go around knocking people out for a few years? There? <laughs> oh, that was you know that was uh like uh. The Bloods, I think, was doing that as in, and it was like a gang initiation. Oh, yeah. People walking down the street all of a sudden, bam. Oh, I think it was either that or if they were slashing your face or some shit, some one or the other. You know, I remember it was, uh, wasn't it that they'd flick the headlights? That was uh, a different was, they'd fight you and follow yeah. you and shoot you. Yeah. Oh, if, yeah. You, if you get the headlight they, things, they would flick the lights. If you flick back, they would follow you. Yes, I heard about that. Or you give yeah. some, if somebody had the brights on and you, you flick know, them back. That's what you love about New York. It's so innovative. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just guys, just creativity is just teaming oh, in New York. God. You know, different things. Um, it's good to see you, bro. It's good to see. I the last time I saw you was that we were doing shows at the Strip. I can yeah. see you in the back looking at my. My watching my my insanity. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. You got a great stage persona. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. You, you Appreciate fill it. a stage and not literally. You fill the stage. Yeah, literally too. Now it's it's we getting well, older. Getting you're wider. one of those guys, but you're one of those guys that uh, I consider to be like a master crowd work guy. Oh, thank That's, you, you, bro. You're, you're so good. Like guys like you and uh, I'm trying to think about like a J- Jay Okerson. Big J. Like, I I say this to this day. Nobody on the planet does crowd work better than big J. Yeah. It's, it's really an art that, you know, like I'm a material guy, but once in a while I go into the crowd, I'm like, yeah. please say something I can use. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, what you call it is really good now too. uh, Schultzy, Andrew Schultz, Andrew Schultz. Yeah, he's, he's good. He's really, I, I, I remember when I first saw that dude, I was like, there's something special about that dude. The day I met him, the day right. I saw him. Yeah. Guys, he, I could, you could sit on that. You could sit on that stool and just have the confidence to command the room. Like well, you that. know what it is too. I think it's it's uh, you 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 tend you gotta trust that you're funny enough that that it will come. And if it's and if you're not and if it's not funny, you gotta kind of trust that. Um, you gotta trust that if you're not funny enough, you're interesting. And, right. and one of the things that I think that really makes you interesting when you're not when you're not using the audience, uh, when you're not using them, do you know what I mean? Like, right. So, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's comics and I will I will. It's the one time I'm not going to name names, but there's people that will have they'll have uh, like written crowd work. Yeah, I, I know somebody like that. It's like very like stock. Yeah. So you 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 say something, you get the response, you go in this, you know. So it's kind of like a, a flow chart. If then, then right. this. If not, then this, and stuff yep. like that. And it's just, uh, you know, shout out to Aaron Burke. Um, oh Jesus! <laughs> oh, sorry. nice. All right, early. And the names in early. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, you know. It, Brilliant dude. I and I, I tease him because I think he's a great comic and I think he's such an interesting dude. Yeah. And I think I, I I really feel like he could be great if he actually tapped in to how interesting he is as a person. But that's a yeah, I seen know. him. He, he kills a crowd work too. But I, are you saying he does some of the stock stuff or it's uh, just he it's, it's I don't it's, see it's, it. You know. It's you know, it's it's you know, it's I mean, if, if every time you go out, you do the same you know, right. it, it turns out the same way. Then yeah, it, I, know, you know. I know one guy that would go around and he'd see a blonde. He goes, hey, so uh, what's your name? Oh, I'm sorry, you're a blonde. What's your uh, name? Oh, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, oh, when, when you see, you know. I just well, I remember uh, myself. Jesus, what's, his, 
Remember uh, was... what's his name? Uh, the oh. uh, Angel Salazar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When he auditioned oh. for Last Comic Standing on television, mind you, it right. was just for producers. But he did crowd work really in oh, front of producers as if there was a crowd in there. Right, right. And they passed him. I think I don't even remember. Yeah, why not? But, why not? But I mean, uh, was... he's just like, hey, this guy over here is crazy, and I like, there's nobody there. It's an empty comedy club. It's 10 in the morning. <laughs> Everyone should work with him once. It's just like the check it out. Check show it out. Hi, right, Chris. Yeah. So, we um, had him on the show. He was great. Yeah, yeah. Angel was great. And you know, what? Angel was great because he uh, very grateful for what uh, like uh, very great, uh, grateful for what he got from from the business. Do you know what I mean? Just a guy, you know, like so often and not we we always talk about what we don't get and never talk about what we what we did get, you know? Yeah. And and he he was very grateful of the fact that he's been able to do this in in in, in comedy. I mean, but I was but you know, I was going to make a point about the crowd work is like, you know, you talk about the crowd work is there's a level of so it's almost like if you're trying to uh if you're if you're using the crowd to get the laugh, right? Yeah. There's an inauthenticity in that. There's a there's a, a lack of of truthfulness in that, and when that lack of truthfulness is there, then the audience will go along with it because it's it's always in the, it's in the context of a of of a comedy club. It's like okay, we're there to laugh and kind of it's a performance. But when you see somebody like somebody like Big J who does crowd work, like he's really asking a question, and he's not he doesn't have his stock answer ready he he he's listening to you and you're receiving it and as you're receiving it um as he's receiving it then he he trusts that he's smart enough to come up with something funny in the context or that he really comes up with something funny or or that if it's not funny he's comfortable with it not being funny will he'll ask another question and, and probe a little deeper and, and he, right. he just knows that he'll find that nugget. And, you know, he's probably about 25 years in comedy. And, and so he's always he knows that anytime he's waited to do that. So what's interesting about that, you know, the show is uh, relationship based, you know, but we've always kind of help guys get laid, how guys get over breakups, help women understand what was going on, help whatever the fuck it was. And one of the things that I think is interesting about that is like all the principles that work and everything else also work in 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 everything else like cosmic comedy. universe com yeah. cosmic comedy universe and life life yeah yeah so it's it's comedy advice but the comedy advice if it really works and there's a truthfulness to it it applies in everything that you do you know yeah and so uh i find that um you'll find guys will talk to women with the intent with an with an ulterior motive and because there's an ulterior motive, uh, they can sniff out the fact that there's an ulterior motive because there's a disingenuousness to it. And then they reject you because of it. Right. Mm. So you're saying like it can't be uh, like crowd work can't be forced or like you can't I, fake it. Like you shouldn't yeah. fake it. You know, I, like um, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I see guys that use it almost as a crutch where like, let's say you have a a bit about uh riding a bicycle mm. they, they'll be like hey who rides a bicycle yeah you ride a bicycle like they're going to the crowd that way right, right. They're, they're really just setting up their joke they don't care right, what you right, say. Right. <laughs> right and the thing is if you if you're gonna I, you know i i teach i do a writer's workshop a comedy writer's workshop and doing it like all through the COVID. i was like i had a lot of young comics like maybe sometimes like 15 at a time on a zoom call and i would do a a, a, a writer's workshop and Harry's actually sat in on a couple of them where, you know, I, I would always say if you're going to do your dumb bicycle joke, right, just do your bicycle joke. You don't yeah. have to create this false connection between yes. people to, 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 to so that they, oh, yeah, we both ride bicycles like they're going to go, oh, OK, right. I ride a bike and you ride a bike. We're like the same. You know, it's right. just. It, it they go okay yeah you rode a bike and so does every person else right. in the fucking world rides a bike. The, my point being the same thing it happens with women. Are you you married now or no? I am yes. For how long uh, you been married? Um, you know, uh, long well, time. 
12, 12 like years. 12, 12. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and y'all don't have kids. You just have a kid. Yeah. What do by the relationship? Yeah. 12 years, but uh, we've been together for 20. Wow. 20. Wow. Yeah. Where'd you meet at? We met at a club on Long Island. A comedy club? No, it's just a regular club, like dance club. This is before okay. I started doing stand up. I uh, met her, and like three years later, I started doing stand up. <laughs> wow, how did that fish that... good? <laughs> you tricked her good. She thought, oh, yeah. She I thought you had, had a old... promising career at something or some demeanor. You're like, haha, All bitch. Right. I'm going to be, be in the arts. Good luck All with right. that. I hope you got money. That's like when they get fat. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, it now. And then... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did, did she have a hard time with it as it as it progressed? I mean, do you do a lot of road work or no? I you know what? I think uh, I think she had a hard time with it when it started. The road work started picking up. And I remember at first she was like uh, saying to a friend of mine that I don't know. She's like, I don't I, I didn't sign up for this. I don't know if I can handle it and being on the road. But now it's like you going on the road. I get out of here. <laughs> you know, thank God. Thank God. I right. Because it gives you a little time away from each other and you kind yeah. of appreciate each other. Yes. Yeah. And plus you out making money, too. So that's good. How's the how's the marriage? Good. Yeah. 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 And you know, it's it's um, it's a tough thing for a comic to find to find someone who's OK with what you're doing, especially when you when I wasn't a comic when she met me. It's one thing mm -hmm. for somebody coming in and you're already an established name in comedy. Right. But I was, you know, I was still managing a retail store. Right. Met her. And then uh, I said, I think I want to try stand up comedy. At least, you know, hit a few open mics, see what happens. And it kind of went, you know, next thing went, you know. I'm, wow. Next thing you know, I'm right going from that. Yeah. Next thing you know, I'm tracking and trekking into the city for acting classes. And mm. it became this whole thing. So she's and, watched the whole growth of everything. Yes. Yeah. She's watched it. She's seen all the uh, she's seen all the ups and downs. And, uh, mm. you know, it's I always say with the comedy, it's a lot of rejection. And, and then you bring in acting and it's even more rejection. It's yeah. like you, get, you, you, you always say I get used to it. But sometimes, you know, every once in a while it catches up to you and you're like, fuck. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It just I, I you know, I um I did really good at acting initially because I didn't I didn't give a fuck about it. Like I right. like I mean, like I didn't take acting classes and stuff like that. I never did. I mean, I think I took one or two acting classes, but I never really considered myself an actor um, because, you know, people I knew that were acting, they went to acting class, they went to college for acting that, you know, it was like this extensive kind of dedication to it. Um, but I think. Um, I've met really good actors in the process of me doing stuff. And a lot of them didn't do acting. I mean, it's definitely, you know, your Angela Bassett, your Denzel Washington, these guys, you know, they went. But I know people who just had really interesting lives yep. who who just had characters that they ran into so many like characters that they could pull from that they, yeah. you know, that they I, I know that that works for me. It's like if I do something, I'm playing a guy that I knew there's a, there's a guy that I knew that was this guy. And then I just, this is, it's almost like an impression of this guy who I knew, but it's, it's really the, the, you know, you know, you talk about the crowd work and everything. It's kind of just, I, I think when you start to, it's funny because you, you, the, you talk about the rejection. It's almost like you start to wonder if you're worthy of the things that you get. Yeah, yeah, you know, like yeah. you, you're going out and it's you're getting smacked down and smacked down. And then on a cognitive level, you feel like you feel like, oh, OK, this is a I, I, I on a cognitive level, on a conscious level, you know, that there's a lot of no's to get to the yes. Yeah. And you, you understand that you believe that, but still getting punched in the face. No, you're not good enough. No, you're not good enough. Eventually, it starts to affect you, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They always say don't take it personally and. I mean, there are times you feel like you have if, as an actor, you have a good audition and then you move on. Yeah. You, sometimes I'll forget about an audition. I'll be like in my kitchen and the TV's on. And I'll hear a line I'm like, wait a second. Why does that line sound familiar? <laughs> <laughs> I go out. I'm like, hey, I auditioned for that. Yeah. Um, or the or the other thing happens is where you audition for something. You forget about it and then they call you. We got oh, we, 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 you're yeah. on hold for this. We while well, you're available, this and then you get something. And, and so I, I always took it as. I took it always took it as look, I, I just read and I leave, you know, yeah. um, half the time 
they don't know what they want anyway until they see it. It's true. They so, say that they don't know what they're looking for. They don't know what they're looking for. And then when they see it, they go, oh, that's it. So, you know, it's, it's funny because you said that you were just saying how anytime they, you know, they keep sending you for these uh, intimidating people and you. Uh, but they they have no you know what I mean? It, it, right. They have no idea. It's just, it's till they see you. I always when I, I always say when I did blacklist, they the guy was supposed to be Polynesian. Right. So I go to this audition. I'm a regular black dude. Now, mind you, I've never played a black dude on anything ever. I've always played Latino, New Zealand, Hawaii. <laughs> so I get there and all these guys with Hawaiian shirts and long hair and ponytails and, you know, they're eating poi and right. <laughs> <laughs> ukuleles in hand. The, the, I was going to say that they got the little ukulele. They're juggling pineapples and shit. And, and <laughs> but I don't know if you find this the case. Do you know, do you find this to be the case? Big guys can't read copy. I uh, I have a hard time uh, memorizing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know you, but I'm saying I mean, you you get booked. But I'm saying when we guys who I audition with big dudes just on they can't read copy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, it, it's it's kind of a thing where like because you're I, I, I don't think big guys go, oh, I'm going to be an actor. You know what I mean? So yeah. the, the, the pickings are slim. So, right. yeah, I mean, I always say that the, the, the success of Terry Crews is because he's not like he's an amazing actor, but he, he right. can read. He can read copy. You give him the line. He'll. Yeah. Ah, and he shoots. Yes. The gun. I mean, you know, yeah. he, he gets it. But so many dudes like I, I like you. I'm looking at all of these guys who are clearly Polynesian Fiji. I, I mean, it smell like coconut oil and everything. <laughs> and you're like and they can't they just can't recopy because it's kind of. So slim. I just I just watched the girl. I don't know if you see the girl on the Olympics, the black chick who just won the wrestling. No, no. I saw the shot put. That was insane. Yeah. So so this this black chick's the first black woman to wear in a uh, wrestling like, you know, regular, you know, you know, professional wrestling, not professional wrestling, but collegiate style wrestling. Amateur Greco Roman style. Uh, yeah. wrestling. And is that what she won? I don't know what it, which medal she won, but there's freestyle. There's, I it's, believe, Greco Roman. I don't yeah, know the she, other one. She, she won a goal, and it's like because she won a goal. Now you're gonna find there's so many people, so many little girls are gonna see that and go, "Oh, yeah. I, I want to. I always wanted to wrestle." You know what I mean? And then it's kind of like the WNBA when the WNBA first started. You had one girl who could had a handle like Allen Iverson, and then other girls who couldn't bounce the ball. And now the level of play, I mean, what is it like 15 years now, Harry? Like the WNBA has got yeah. it's Pat. I think it's almost uh, I want to say 20? Uh, uh, almost 20. Nah, yeah, almost 20. Yeah, it's got to be more than 20, actually. Let me see, uh, because 2001 is 20 years ago. The WNBA started in the mid 90s. Right, right. So, it's so over it's, 20 years, it's 20 years. So when you know, when these things happen and people reach this level of expertise, it, it inspires the next Great. It's like the, the the I don't know if you watch MMA, but this guy Adesanya, this guy is a MMA dude. Israel Adesanya. Israel Adesanya. He 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 grew up watching Anderson Silva, you know, and he ends up kicking Anderson Silva. But it was like this guy was his hero. You know what I'm saying? And so there's a whole right. generation of guys who start to to. But I mean, I, Chris, I, I let me see. ask you, let me ask you this. Like you bring your wife into this world where she didn't expect to go into. Right. How did you end up handling it? Like, how did it affect you? Like your career? How did it affect uh, the marriage? Well, uh, when I first got into stand up, I don't think I was considering myself a full time stand up comedian for at least uh, seven years. So it was a slow transition, which helped. It wasn't like I just dropped everything after my first open mic. It was like seven years in and uh then i had lost my job and she had said to me well you want to be a full-time stand-up comedian now's your time to go for it and i went right. for it and never looked oh, that back. was nice yeah was and, really and even though she was yeah. even though she was uncomfortable with it in the first place yeah yeah well she knew we were in a situation where i had you know i could mess around for six months and it was almost like yeah i guess you say there was a six-month window that i had approved to her that i can bring an income Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember my, my first some of my first road gigs, my buddy Chris Monty was taking me on the road with him and uh, I was opening for him for a while. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, I didn't start headlining for another like five years after that, but right, right. Um, I felt like I had, I felt like I had, you know, when you first start and you're hosting a lot of shows, you feel like you have 15 minutes for five years. Yeah. Because every time you get a better joke, you take something out and put it in. And I feel like I, I feel like I had 30 for the longest time because mm-hmm. when something funnier came along, I take this out and put that in and I still have 30, but it's a little funnier now. Right, 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 right. That was, uh, but May was a lot of great memories and, uh, just, just, you know, and somebody once told me that the, the middle spot is the easiest spot in show business. And it really is. Yeah. Every once in a while I'll get the feature for oh, someone. It's, oh, it's so yeah. And it's, great. and it's like, this is 20 minutes. Yeah. And then what do I do? Oh, I go home. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like, you kidding me? Plus you don't gotta, you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to create a relationship, you know, it's just, like, it's yeah. just you hit the gas and you go. It's a, it's a drag race. It's a drag yeah. race. Uh, me and Godfrey always talk about it's, uh, the, what we call the hot 20 minutes. Okay. So when you when you get a you get a comic that's really, really, you know, that's headlining and then you're already a headliner and you get to do you get to do the hot 20. Yes. You and you just come in, blah, 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 blah. Right. And, then, and then everybody's coming to you going, you should have headlined. You should have. And then you're like, nah, you know, you don't understand. They yes. Just, I always say that. You don't know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They always say you should have headlined. They don't know how what it takes and how much work, more work it is to headline. And like you're saying, create that relationship and spread that hot 20 out <laughs> yeah 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 it's amazing now, that your girl was so supportive man because it's a yeah. dicey yeah that's such a situation. rare thing yeah. to do there but, but times, there was but there was boundaries too though go ahead I'm yeah sorry. Th- there were a few times where um she said to me she goes wow you know money was getting tight and this is before i got on kevin's uh show and there was a couple things i was looking into i i, I was thinking about driving a cab just to get some more income in she was saying mm. You know, the stand up and obviously is not p- bringing enough income. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was looking at the driving a cab. I actually called SAG after and I was thinking about going financial, you know, FICOR, they call it. What is where, that? Oh, where you can do uh, union and non union. Yeah. And right around there, I got on Kevin's show and things were good for a few years. But now it's like I'm thinking about calling SAG again, saying, hey, I'm thinking about going FICOR. You know, right, right, right. <laughs> you know, that's what how you long did do. you do? You did Kevin is wait, Kevin. Um, Kevin can, Kevin, Kevin can wait. Yeah, that was uh, two seasons. Two seasons. Of Kevin can wait, or was yeah. uh yeah, two seasons of Kevin can wait. It was like geared. It was like almost a, a ground ball to la- last five seasons, and you know they just tried making it better. And I, I thought they were do you know heading in that direction. It was I thought it was great as it was, and then they made all these changes, and I was like uh oh. But then s- season two came along, and they it looked like they were fixing things, and then mm. uh, it was a, yeah, it was a real shocker for everybody when they canceled it. Mm. You, you, like you said, Harry, I'm, I'm interested in knowing that. So this so it was basically she was she was like, look, give it a shot. But yeah. she was also like, OK, these are the parameters we yeah. need to yeah. we need to survive financially. What does she do for a living? She's a hairdresser and uh, colorist mm. and master colorist. But she also, you know, like me, she's realized it's like my, it's, her band her business kind of went downhill for, over the last few years mm-hmm. people i guess people doing their hair by themselves at their own homes and mm-hmm. uh but like she like myself is trying to diversify we started uh well she started boarding dogs at the house we got mm-hmm. you know and also uh looking into other options uh, launching a candle business whatever you know it's just anything to prevent us from having to like sit at a desk and Right, right. Call somebody boss. So, and, and and both of you had that kind of mindset in the beginning that you just you never wanted to. You always kind of had this entrepreneurial spirit. That, right. You never wanted to. Yeah, you wanted to. Now, did you know that all along, or what, like when, when you I, met her, or yeah, when when I met her, she owned a, a hair salon. But she I mean, was that a years. conversation that you had about that she never wanted to work, or or did you just kind of get lucky that you your kind of mindset was the same? I say, yeah, kind of lucky that our mindset was the same. But, you know, there's been conversations where like, I, ah, well, one of us is going to have to bring in more money somehow. And, right. Uh, you know, that's another reason why I got the voiceover stuff. I'm like, let me I always I've always tickled around the uh, um, doing voiceovers, but never really dove into it, made a voiceover studio. And mm-hmm. so I'm working on a few things with some friends, cartoons and stuff like that. And 
let me, let me try to go for it. You know, get more auditions. Just, yeah. just let my when when the voiceover uh, agency, the voiceover department of Buckwall sees I'm more serious about it. Hopefully, I'll get more auditions. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting too that you, um, you know, to see something like you, like you were on a uh, Kevin C can wait is a major kind of sitcom. Yeah. So there's a lot of guys that we know that, you know, people are seeing on TV, they're on TV, they're doing this, they're doing that. And then some of them, you know, some how many guys I know who 40, 40, 40, mid 40s and they and they got three roommates, you know, yeah. they're living in, in Astoria. And then it's kind of like this feast of famine thing with it. So that's all that also speaks, Dante, to like not letting the image we see because Instagram will fuck you up oh, like yeah. that. TikTok yeah, yeah, yeah. people will yeah. only put the best part of themselves out there and sometimes yes. not even a real part of themselves. Yeah. Sometimes they'll create a whole fictional thing and you think like, man, I'm not doing as well as everybody just in oh. life, even if it's not in show business, just in yeah. life. You go, oh, look at all these people doing amazing shit and I'm not doing and you have to be cognizant of like the reality of it. It's not all real. It's not in fact, it's, none, almost none of it is real. You know, right, right. And even the part that's real is exempl is 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 exploded out or, or, or it's so hyperbolic because you don't see any of the other stuff. It's like we're here talking about this and you went on a major thing. I've been in major feature films. Yeah. And you got egg cartons in the back of the room. To, right. You know, still pushing. Ooh, yeah. Worrying about the next paycheck, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do these podcasts sometimes and people interview me and they go, tell us about your big break. I'm like, my big break. <laughs> I'm still living in my dad's house. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was a great yeah. opportunity. It was really a fantastic opportunity. Uh, but uh, it's really, it's just, a, it's really is a journey, man. If, if you don't enjoy the journey, you're going to go crazy. I, I, I enjoyed the, uh, camaraderie with other comics and um even the shit gigs you know mm -hmm. something well, you that's the about. other part is is kind of like we talked about being grateful and i think that's yeah. important too like uh, oh, i yeah. was just found myself i have to catch myself every once in a while because i could be very negative Dante, yeah. believe it or yeah. not i don't I, know uh, i mean i swear i really never thought yeah, that i can be you ever. a tad bit negative like you know i have a spot tonight and i looked at the time and i did the math i go Oh, fuck. I'm going on first, aren't I? Like, right. Fuck, You're taking the bullet. I'm tired of going on first or going on last. Yeah. You know, like I'm tired. I'm, of. I'm tired of going on last. But, right. you but know, you're like, you know what? Last week I got bumped off a show entirely because, you know, a celebrity came in to do a right. set. So it's like you have to be grateful and like, hey, I have to remember. Oh, I get to do comedy. Yeah. Whatever that is, like you have to find it and be grateful for what you have. And also the happiness comes from within. It doesn't come from the career is the other thing I have to learn. So no matter what you're doing, you know, job wise, you have to find that happiness within and find the joy within, which is a blessing and a curse because it's not based on your job, but you have to now you have to figure it what out. Do you, what do you mean by that, Harry? I mean, I mean, meaning like, you know, I know we both know very successful people with a lot of money who are miserable as fuck. Yep. Yeah. Some of yep. the most uh, famous and some of the most financially secure people are the most emotionally insecure people because they didn't learn anything along the way or they just keep taking it for granted or they didn't fix any of the issues they have. And they're trying to base their happiness on the next gig that they get financially right. or I'm, I'm trying not to keep it to show business, but let, let's just say fuck it, like whatever business venture. Right. I mean, I, how many stockbrokers and shit, do you know, they're just drinking themselves and getting coked up because they're miserable yeah. because they're the whole the entire basis of their happiness is the next big deal. And when the deal is done, they celebrate that for a moment and then they have to do it again and find another one. And when your happiness is based on something like that, that's outside of yourself, it becomes yeah. problematic because you're constantly chasing it where you have to kind of figure out like inside of yourself you can be happy with a lot of things look man i have clean drinking water right i should be happy that i have clean drinking water something that a huge part of the world does not have access to that's right you know like there are people who get up today and they're they don't know if they're going to make it till the end of the or day or they're walking they're walking five miles to get drinking water you right. Know, right to right. carry it back five miles you know um 
And so yeah. I bitch that the DVR doesn't work or that the Wi-Fi is too slow. And, you know, you can get caught up in all that shit and just end up being miserable. That's right. Well, the COVID kind of, you know, like I got to a, you know, you, you, you reach a, le- you know, Chris, and I know you know what I mean. It's like you reach a level of, of you've been doing this so long. There's a level of expertise that you just, you, you, ha- you're, you're able to, you know, you, you believe you're at this level of expertise. You know, when you go in a room, you know what your material, you know, you can, you, you know, even if you bomb on a scale of one to 10, the bomb is a what? A six and a half, seven, you know what I mean? It ain't even, it ain't even a bomb really. But, you know, the COVID not being able to do comedy, not be able to do, babe, I mean, I got to the point where there were certain bar shows I'm like, I'm not doing that and fuck that and this and that. It's not enough money and it's this. And then when the COVID, when it started opening up, I was so hungry to get on stage. I realized how much we love this. I always tell this story that there was one night, one winter it was 12 degrees. I'm on a rooftop, right? I'm on a rooftop with a fur coat on and there's 27 people, 20, like 27 couples in sleeping bags and bundled up with blankets and heaters on a roof, listening to me spit, tell dick jokes, you know? Right. Right. And and you go as much as they said that this was, this was an essential work. It was because people, uh, you know, yeah, I get it. Once you have food and toilet paper and those things, these, these other, these other things that a human in itself are, uh, they're just as important. They're just as in- essential. You know, I, I was like, this is cold. You know, that kind of cold. Where, and I wouldn't wear a hat because, you know, like, you, you know, I sit down when I'm on stage. So it's like my facial expression is really important. And so you don't want to wear a hat because you can't see your face. And and man, that cold was whip, whipping me upside the head. And I was like, man, I was like, I wouldn't pay to see me in this way. You know what I mean? But they right. were out there thick. I mean, did you do any of that? stuff to any of those outdoor stuff roof stuff yeah. yeah 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 i did i did a few outdoor shows where uh and i, I always say like i i i, I don't th- i don't feel like i've taken uh the crowds for granted but i really really appreciate them now where mm-hmm. i i appreciated them i appreciated them before but now even more i did um I did the one uh, J Nog had that drive-in one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yeah, was yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. That, there was an, I, like I got to do this just for an experience, and I did a, a couple outdoor shows. And when I was doing a couple in Pennsylvania, and these people were showing up in their lawn chairs, yeah. and they were just starving yeah. for live entertainment, starving yeah. for live entertainment. Yeah. To get out. Yeah, yeah. It was after a while, people. You don't realize the humanity of of. Uh, you know that the the whole social experiment is just as important. But as beyond else. beyond that, like it's also about you know fixing the things that make you unhappy. You know, or being like, if you hate your job, you go, all right, why do I hate my job? What is it about this that I don't like? How can I change it? How can I find something else? You know, trying to fix those things instead of like sitting in the misery, because that can happen. People can end up sitting. You know, being a, being in a shit job, it's not fun, and you just blame life. And if you want to make the changes like anything, whether it comes to relationships or women or your finances, you have to look at it, analyze it realistically and go, how much of it is me bitching? How much of it can I change? And what can I do to, to change it? Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I find is interesting that you have a, a lot of times people have an idea of what six, you know, they, they, they feel like success is elusive, but they've never really defined what, the success is in the first place. Do you know what I mean? Like if you don't know what the finish line is, you, you also don't, how do you know when you get there? You know, like how much, you know, how much money is it? How much, how much, I mean, what kind of show is it? I mean, who do you want to work with? What, what do you want to do? Yeah. If you have a, if you don't have a, a, a real understanding of, uh, of what the finish line looks like, then you never really know if you've ever, you know, so many, so many, and Harry, you and I have talked about this a lot. Like so many people like, look, you're, you're, you're selling out at clubs, but now you want theaters. 
Right. You know, you're selling out theaters, but you now you want right. arenas. You 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 know what I mean? It, it's uh, just, I want to be in, I want to be on TV. Well, now I want to be in movies. Yeah. Now I want to be the lead in movies. Oh, yeah. now I want to win an yeah. Oscar. Now I want to win two Oscars. Yeah. I just got to yeah. get my plug to the computer. I got to get my computer plug. I'll be right back. Right? No, okay. no, no worries. Don't worry. Um, yeah, because you could get lost in all that stuff and just be chasing around for and be no happier than you would have. We sometimes I think we put the happiness on the finances. Yeah, yeah. Which look, money helps make things easier. There's no doubt about it. You yeah, know, but we does. know. No, it was look. We personally know. I mean, I mean, everybody knows rich people that have fucking OD'd on drugs. I sure. Mean, how big was Kurt Cobain, dog? You know. Sure. And we're biggest not even rock star about, in the world at that yeah, point. Just biggest rock star in the world. Just you know, I mean, we we and we're not talking about just you know living a rough life and oh, we're talking about purposely took themselves out at the at the level of of uh you know at the at the highest level that you could understand and they they literally took themselves out i had a is funny i want to uh chris when he comes back on can you hear me chris no he's, he's still he's, saying he it fun. yeah um but we know you know there's people that i was telling i'll tell you harry we kind of talked about it there was this kid so this kid, this young kid was doing this show um, I was on the other day. Right. And, I, and he does mm -hmm. my he does my writer's workshop. And uh, apparently the kid, I don't know if he's 20 something early 20s. And apparently in high school, some guy who who um, basically took took his identity, stole his identity. Right. And took over his identity. I don't know if he messed up his his money or something like that. But he also started had a Facebook page, and the the girlfriend that he had at the time in high school, he ended up break. The girl ended up breaking up with him because of some some of the stuff that this guy did stole his identity. Right. Right. So fast forward. Uh, you know, this this is. Five years ago. So, I mean, so that means what? How when is the kid? How how old is the kid? Probably if he graduated from 24, high school five years ago, 24, 22, 20, 22, 23, 22, 24, 22, something yeah. like that. So um, he has this friend of his. Who in his own mind says he, he describes the guy as kind of a mook, just like an, an idiot, like really kind of unaware of the social uh, you know, the social dynamics of people. He oversteps his boundaries, say, says the inappropriate things. So so this kid is doing a bringer show. He's got to bring a certain amount of people. This guy brings five people to his show, friends of theirs, people who didn't know. And he brings the guy who stole his identity. Identity, yeah. Right. He, he brings that with. guy. Right. Not only that, but he says to the to the to the guy to the comic, he goes, oh, I got a surprise for you. Right. And he goes, I got a, I got a big surprise for you. He brings the five people. And one of the guys who stole his identity is is the guy. This is the surprise. So in this guy's mind, it's it's oh, you know, that was funny. That remember how he funny. Stole, yeah. How funny is this? He stole your identity and made you break up with the only girlfriend you ever had. And blah, 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 right. And so the kid is I pull up to the show. And this kid is losing his mind. Like he wants to leave. He doesn't want to perform. He doesn't, you know, he's just, he's just, out. he's like losing his mind. And I kind of go, I go, um, so, you know, I initially give him the, the, the speech. Listen, you're always going to be doing things, club, people in crowds, clubs, there's always going to be people that you don't like, you know, don't let people control your life by renting space in your head. You know, you, uh, you know, we, we, a lot of times we'll have relationships and stuff with our parents and stuff. And maybe they don't they don't think we're good enough or they're this. And then and then we're 40 years old later and we're still holding on to that. And we're proving to them that we're good enough. And we're and they're dead. They're worm food already. And they right. have no real control over your life. And we're still proving to them that we're good enough. You know, Um. So I'm, I, I gave so him that freaking him out. I mean, this is yeah, something oh, yeah. that's affecting him. And the kid comes from the kid is is taking a bus from D.C. to come and do this show. 
So wow. he does comedy in DC, but he's here to do this show at a at a real at a at a real club, and and it's important to him. But he's so freaked out now that he literally doesn't want to go in. He goes, I don't know. I want to wring this guy's neck. Uh, I want I want to do this. I don't know if I want to wring that guy's neck or the guy, um, the the guy who brought him or whatever. And I'm talking to this I'm talking to this kid, and the guy, the mook. He's like, when are you going up? When are you going up, bro? When are you going? He's just like, and he's just solely oblivious to what's going on. Um, uh, and so uh, the kid ends up not going up eventually. Yeah, right? yeah. He so he, up- he, I give him the speech about, look, you're gonna always have it. He still, he goes, look, I got anxiety, and I got, this. I go, look, it doesn't matter. He goes, um, so there was two shows back to back. I said, what if you don't perform on this show, and you perform on the next show? I'll get you a spot on the next show. He goes, oh, well, I got a, you know, I got a, I have a, a bus ticket to go back to D.C. at nine o'clock. I'm not going to be able to make the bus. I said, I'll pay for your bus ticket. Wow. He goes, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm dog watching. I got to get the dog the medication. I go, well, he goes, well, is the dog going to die? He goes, no, the dog, you know, I mean, I could not feed the, you know, we're going back. I go, look, you don't want to do this. It's fine that you don't want to do it. I go, but I, I tried to remove every so I'll take your bus ticket. I'm not going to drive you back to D.C., but I'll give you another bus ticket. I'll get you another spot. If I said I even said to him, if you want, I'll uh, what I'll do is um, am I frozen, Harry? No, I, I, oh, okay. I see. I yeah. uh, oh, he's, wait. Yeah, he's fr- frozen. Oh, is his here, image yeah. frozen? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, that's a pretty good Let's trick. See man. here. Thanks, really, Chris. Oh, it did freeze for a second. Now it's you black. Yeah, what do you, you want, want to, to uh, mute and unmute your video? Maybe that'll fix it. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, from our end, I didn't realize that. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Let's see here. Sorry about that. Okay. Here we go. How's that? There you go. That's I'm much moving. better. That's much better, bro. Yeah, moving? Perfect, okay. perfect, 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 perfect. Right. Perfect. So, Chris, I go. So I'm, I'm doing everything I can do to, re- to, to remove the obstacles. He also can't believe that I'm taking so much of an interest in 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 all of this anyway, right? Right. Um, and I mean, uh, he's lucky he found you because uh, uh, any other comic might not have cared. Yeah, might like, not have been invested if it wasn't you and it wasn't uh Kim, the producer of the show, who's also very sweet and kind. Yeah. It, so, anybody else would have been like, "Well, too bad. We got to keep it moving. Don't care." Right. So he goes. I go. Look. If you you, you go home, you don't have to perform. Um. The guy, the guy goes, uh, he goes, I, you know, is this going to cost me anything with the producer? I go, nothing's going to happen. You'll be fine. Right. So uh, he made it easy as for him. As, easy, easy, as, possible, as yeah. easy as it could be. I, I couldn't have made it any easier. And uh, so he goes, uh, he leaves and the guy comes out and he says, the guy basically says, uh, I was waiting for my friend to go up. He didn't go up. And, and you know, I, uh, you know, Harry will tell you, I can't not, you know, I, I mean, I was, I was bullied as a kid. So I can't, I, I'm just not, I'm, I go, well, he left because you fucking brought this guy who t- stole his identity. I go, and you, and you, and it was, and he's like, bro, it was five years ago. And now I, I'm like, I'm I'm going to zoo. I'm going. You don't get to fucking decide whether it bothers him or not. You, it's not your pain. You don't get to decide when. It, it could be twenty years from now. So now I'm I'm getting heated. So I go I go to the kid. I go. Let me ask you something. I go. Say I punch you in your fucking mouth, and then I see you five years later, and I go. Eh, you know, it was five years ago. I punched you in your fucking mouth. He goes. And the weird thing is, he was so dense. There was like, yeah, I guess I guess I would like he didn't even understand right, like right. the dynamic of how angry I was and that it, it, and that I was literally kind of threatening them in the same sense. Because the example, yeah. the yeah. example was say I punch you in your fucking mouth. He really uh, gave it legit thought like, oh, like OK, oh, what if you did I punch me in the mouth <laughs> so, five years from now? <laughs> he backs up. Right. Oh, I really didn't think of it like that. And he goes, well, you know, and then he takes two steps back and he does like any idiot does, which is interesting because, like I would say this to Harry, assholes have no problem being assholes. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. It's so comfortable swimming in assholeness, you know. Um, he goes, uh, he, he he says, uh, uh, he goes, you know, I've I've I've, I've I, I definitely am humbled. I I didn't think of it this way, and I really I I really he and then he takes two steps back and charges again. But he says, come on, but if you want to be the best comic in the world, you want to be Dave Chappelle, you want to be the greatest comic ever, you have to you have to. You have to uh, excel past. You can't let these things bother you. And you can't you can't let this stuff bother. You, you got to keep pushing. You got to keep not be unstoppable. You gotta, and I go and I go and I say to this dude, I go, what the fuck are you talking about? I go, Dave Chappelle walked away from a 50 million dollar contract because he wasn't comfortable about the artistic direction. I go, Greg Giraldo OD'd on heroin. I go, Mitch Fattel OD'd on heroin. Mitch Hedberg. Mitch Hedberg. Uh, yeah. Mitch Hedberg, OD. I go time and time again. People have pulled away because of I go. Eddie Murphy has not done stand up since what Delirious was first or Raw was first. Raw was second. Raw, yeah. 1989. Raw. Raw. Still yeah. talking about coming back and never, never coming back because because there's so much pressure and so much involved. I go, who the fuck? I go, have you? I, 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 I said it was funny because I was just thinking about the Olympics and what's um. Uh, Dawes just pulled out of the fucking Olympics. Maybe one of the greatest Olympias, uh, gymnastic Olympias of all time. Osaka just pulled out of the Open, the French Open. I go, who the f I go, have you achieved any degree of success on any of those people's level? And so who the fuck are you to talk about what people could do or what they can't do? It's just so absurd. He goes, uh... Yeah, I, I didn't get it until you started talking about punching me in the face. I'm like, <laughs> all right, what, what the fuck? What are you gonna? Sometimes what that's what people need. Yeah, yeah, it's it's well, crazy. Well, so Simone Biles, by the way, this just Simone happened. Biles. Yeah, uh, revealed that uh, she was dealing with a family tragedy. Her, her aunt died unexpectedly while uh. she was at the Olympics. So while everyone's bitching and moaning about her not being strong enough, which is bullshit. Yeah, none of your fucking business. Uh. Anyone complaining that she wasn't tough enough. She was dealing with, you know, she's a teenager dealing with somebody who died. Her yeah. aunt dying, somebody in her family dying. Somebody very close but nobody to, knew. Right. So everybody's yapping away. But it just goes to show you like like this fucking dude is just that didn't give a fuck being very oblivious to other people's feelings and not giving a shit, having no empathy. Yeah, no empathy, having no empathy, which we talk about all the time is having empathy. Ace, yeah. authenticity, credibility, and empathy. Not having yeah. empathy and putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. Like, what would this be like? And those people are some of the, I mean, they're, they're some of the worst people in the world. No empathy. That's yeah. the number yeah. one characteristic that you find from the worst people in the world. They what all have the, no the, empathy. The, the girl got caught smoking weed. Um, and her mother, uh, the one that was supposed to be, she was supposed to on in track. The fastest and, runner in the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Shikara. Is it Shikara? Hold on. I'll find it. I forgot what her name is. She got caught already. smoking weed? Carrie it's, Richardson. Car is it Shikari? Shikari. Shikari, 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 Shikari Richardson. Richardson. Sorry. Right. So she, she, uh, so she, her, so she, she was raised by her grandmother and, uh, and another woman that she called her mother and, she found out that her biological mother died while she was doing an interview about going to the Olympics. The, 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 wow. Well, how is this going to how are you going to affect that your mother passed away? And she was like, my mother, like she's in the fucking interview. Oh, man. So the kind of the, to ease the pain, she ended up smoking a joint and the Olympic, I guess the board or one of the things that they say there's no outside substances and they actually say that marijuana like marijuana is on the list for not not and then she got she tested smoking a joint after her mother died and she got you know she got pulled out um chris you want to hang out for a little bit we're going to do yeah. some, like a few minutes after the the patreon plug your uh your social media and stuff real quick anything yeah. you got going on yeah well I, uh Let's see. Instagram, it's at Roach Comic. Uh, TikTok, it's at Chris Roach Live. And my website is ChrisRoachLive.com. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you. Aaron. 
Uh, you could go to my website, IHateComedy.com, and all my stuff at Harry Turjanian. And uh, join us over at Patreon. We're going to be talking more stories. Maybe we'll tell that other story that happened, too, that's even more. Uh, yeah. You want to talk uh, about yeah. uh, uh, learning was, a lesson about two make, two, Chris. making it uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> and the lesson that goes, like, making it uncomfortable for assholes. Yeah, uh, yeah. We have a story and a doozy over at Patreon that we're probably going to tell uh, in a couple minutes here. So come and join us at uh, patreon.com yeah, slash manschool202. And your, you, your stuff, Harry, real quick. Uh, just add Harry Turjanian. That's where you okay. can find me. Do all okay. my stuff. Um, you can check all my stuff. Just Google me, Dante Nero. Uh, all my stuff comes up. Instagram yeah, is the... My, my stand-up on YouTube, yeah. by the way. Not enough people are watching that. That the, stuff. It's good the stuff. Dante up. Nero. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? Uh, sexual revolution is being podcasted yo i love y'all um support us on the patreon um so we can keep doing this thank you man appreciate it